Dear students, welcome to the EPG Part Shala. I am Dr. Gurmeet Singh, Professor of Chemistry in University of Delhi. Today we are going to discuss about the module which will be dealing with high resolution electron energy loss spectroscopy, which is abbreviated as H R E E L S in short. This comes under the paper of surface analytical techniques part one. When we finish this module, you will be able to understand the basics of this, which shall deal with what is the EELS, what is the second part that deals with HREELS, the basic concepts pertaining to this, the process of historical development of these two techniques, then the various components and properties which are associated with these two equipments. Why is it used like this? And of course, the advantages and disadvantages of uh, using these two equipments for analysis. Uh, and of course, we will have the summary towards the end. Electron energy loss spectroscopy uh, is the term that we normally use. Here we have two kinds uh, in elastic and elastic scattering. In elastic scattering, it's a fundamental scattering process in which the kinetic energy of an incident particle is not conserved in contrast to what you observe in elastic scattering. In elastic scattering events might lead to a well-defined energy losses covering a wide range of energy from 10 raised to the power 4 to 10 raised to the power minus 3 electron volts. Core level excitations are from 100 to about approximately 10 raised to the power 4 electron volts and this is the this comes under C L E E L S. Then we come down to plasmon and interband excitation that is 1 to 100 electron volts E E L S. Photon and adsorbate vibration excitation that is 10 to 10 raised to the power 3 to about 1 electron volt is the range which is normally used in high resolution electron energy loss spectroscopy. The most versatile technique which involves analysis of the energy distribution of the inelastically scattered electrons in the transmitter beam is the one which is being explained here. The energy resolution of the present day spectrometers is at times as high as 1 million electron volts. High resolution electron energy loss spectroscopy and we had talked about the fundamentals of this in earlier slides. We talked about the introduction and uh, the instrumentation which is involved uh, in this kind of spectroscopy which is again a very important spectroscopy used in a variety of uh, processes. High resolution electron energy loss spectroscopy is one of the most advanced instruments which is mainly used to obtain the vibrational signatures of the surface and adsorbate species under ultra high vacuum conditions. By assigning the vibrational modes of the collected spectrum, the chemical bonding between the surface and adsorbate binding geometry and molecular orientation and ordering can be identified. This method is widely employed in various surface science researches. In the lab of Burnsick, we use it to identify the growth and chemical bonding of molecular architecture on semiconductor surfaces. It is also used for finding out the mechanism of catalytic reactions on metal and alloys uh, crystal surfaces. The spectrometer in our uh, high resolution electron energy loss spectroscopy under high vacuum conditions or under UHV system can offer a resolution up to 4 cm inverse for the direct beam which is close to IR resolution. Compared to IR used in vacuum surface science, this technique called HREELS has a higher surface sensitivity and wider energy window 
of vibrations from 100 to 8000 centimeters inverse. In addition, our HREELS can also be used for exploring electronic transitions of surfaces or adsorbates. With the incident energy of 10 to the power 10 to 20 electron volts. In this case, the method is called electronic EELS and it can even offer valence bond information about the surface and the adsorbate similar to UPS. The basic principle of HREELS is to use an electron monochromator to give a well defined electron beam of a fixed incident energy which scatters the surface. The scattered electrons are then analyzed using an appropriate electron energy analyzer. The inelastically scattered electrons lose a certain amount of energy and this magnitude of energy loss which is uh, delta E is equal to E0 minus E this energy loss is equal to the vibrational quantum that is the energy of the vibrational mode of the surface or absorbed excited in the inelastic scattering process. There are two inelastic excitation mechanisms of the surface vibrational modes, the dipole scattering mechanism and the impact scattering mechanism. The dipole scattering mechanism occurs through an interaction mediated via long range electrical fields set up in both the vacuum and the sample by probing electron and by the surface excitation. Because the dipole interaction is valid in a range much greater than the atomic dimensions, it can be described classically as a, a process which works in vacuum more effectively. The dipole scattering mode of HREELS is carried out in a specular geometry where the electron incident angle 60 degrees to the normal of the sample surface is equal to the spectrum scattering angle. We have been talking about high resolution electron energy loss spectroscopy which is also called Hurley's in uh, short or it is abbreviated as HR. E E L S, which stands for High Resolution Electron Energy Loss Spectroscopy. It has already been dealt in the earlier slides about what exactly is energy, electron energy loss spectroscopy, and what is this high resolution energy, electron energy loss spectroscopy. In this slide, we are talking about the electron. Every primary electron has one of three possibilities in terms of its interactions with atoms of the specimen. This has been given in the diagram included here, which has primary electrons targeting onto the surface, and then specimen atom is there from where inelastically scattered electrons come out at low angle then elastically scattered electrons would come out at high angle and unscattered transmitted electrons will go straight out of this what is elastic scattering and inelastic scattering the example of this has been given in the diagram in this slide which gives elastic scattering and inelastic scattering and then elastic scattering in a crystalline specimen. It has been indicated that elastic scattering which goes through the specimen will go at a low angle and inelastic scattering on a specimen atom will go out at high angle. Elastic scattering in a crystalline specimen would also come out accordingly. These have been very properly illustrated in the set diagram. For most of the electrons, the change in energy is not random. 
but is directly related to which electron from which atom from which orbital shall the inelastic collision took place. This can be seen in the diagram which is enclosed herewith. This specific loss of energy is known as electron energy loss spectroscopy or is abbreviated as EELS. Electron energy loss spectroscopy. Magnetic spectrometer has been indicated here in the diagram. This discriminates the energy loss electrons on the basis of their absolute energy. The signal from the electron energy loss spectrophotometer can be used to generate an EELS spectrum. The spectrometer can be used to produce a compositional map here. High resolution electron energy loss spectroscopy, as I had said in the beginning also, is a very good analytical technique. It helps in quantitative analysis. It anal analyzes the inelastic scattering suffered by the transmitted electron beam with measurements of the electron energy distribution. This is capable of giving structural and chemical information. Electron spectrometer is the another one which uh, we use here. The photograph of this EELS spectrometer. High resolution electron energy loss spectroscopy is a high sensitivity, non destructive technique for the study of surface and adsorbate vibrations and also has low energy electronic excitations. The HREELS or EELS both are shown in this diagram in this slide. Here a picture is given or a schematic diagram of the first generation HREEL spectrometer has been given here, which will make it obvious about the kind of components which are used in this kind of spectroscopy. This figure shows a schematic diagram of a first generation HREEL spectrometer as I said earlier. In this model, the one which is shown here, the energy of incident electron can be varied from 1 to 10 electron volt to afford high resolution energy monochromation and analysis are done either with the cylindrical mirror analyzer, cylindrical detector or deflector, or spherical deflector analyzers in combination with retarding field optics. Of specular collection of the backscattered electrons is afforded by rotation of either the sample or the analyzer. Owing to the extremely low signals, that is 10 to about 10 amperes, continuous dynode electron multiplier detectors are employed. This photograph given above is of an UHREELS spectrometer. This model consists of an electron gun, a two stage monochromator, a single stage energy analyzer and a channel electron multiplier detector. Both energy monochromation and energy analysis are carried out with 127 degrees cylindrical deflection analyzer. The incident electrons have an initial energy spread of 0 0.3 electron volts. The two stage monochromator serves to narrow the energy spread to less than 1, 1 billion electron volt and generate a highly mono energetic beam of low energy electrons, typically of 1 to 10 electron volts. A zoom lens system focuses and accelerates the electron beam onto the sample. The backscattered electrons are passed through a separate zoom or a separate zoom lens, we can call it, 
for focusing the deacceleration before they are sorted out by a single stage energy analyzer into the detector. The signal is fed to a pre-amplifier as pulses for electron counting. The analyzer is designed to be rotatable from 0 degrees to 78 degrees for off specular measurements. These are called impact scattering measurements also. High resolution electron energy loss spectroscopy is the one where obviously we use the loss energy loss spectroscopy uh, obviously where, which is a tool used in the surface science. This spectroscopy which in short is called HREELS is a very powerful tool for surface science experiments. The inelastic scatterings of electrons from surfaces is utilized to study electronic excitations or vibrational modes of the surface or of the molecules adsorbed to a surface. Hence, in contrast to the other electron energy loss spectroscopies, that is EELS or uh, the other variant of this, which is HREELS, it deals with the small energy losses in the range of 10 to the power minus 3 electron volts to about 1 electron volt. It plays an important role in the investigation of surface structure, catalysis, dispersion of surface phenomenon or surface phonons and for monitoring the epitaxial growth. High resolution energy loss spectroscopy or the way we obtain this, that has been shown in the diagram here, which is a spectra of high resolution electron energy loss spectroscopy. Most frequently, HREELS is used to measure adsorbate vibrations. Identification of the adsorbate species, the adsorption sites, and the spatial orientation of the adsorbate is possible. In HREELS, not only the electron energy loss can be measured, often the angular distribution of electrons of a certain energy loss in reference to the specular direction gives interesting insight to the structures on the surface. This diagram indicates a typical HR L S spectroscopy pattern. Basic concepts. High resolution electron energy loss spectroscopy is one of the most advanced instruments which is mainly used to obtain the vibrational signatures of the surface or the surface which one is interested in studying and adsorbate species on this under ultra high vacuum conditions. So this is able to analyze the surfaces in a very proper manner. By assigning the vibrational modes of the collected spectrum, the chemical bonding between surface signs or surfaces and adsorbate, the binding geometry and molecular orientation and ordering can be very precisely identified with the help of this. This method is widely employed in various surface science researches and various kinds of experiments. The basic principle of HREELS is to use an electron monochromator to give a well-defined electron beam of a fixed incident energy which scatters from the surface. The so-called scattered electrons which I have just explained are then analyzed by using an appropriate electron energy analyzer. The inelastically scattered electrons lose a certain amount of energy. The magnitude of the energy loss, that is E delta is equal to E0 minus E, is equal to the vibrational quantum, that is the energy of course, of the vibrational mode in these uh, surfaces that are being considered or surface and adsorbate thereon. 
which are in the excited state in an elastic inelastic scattering process now how do we go about explaining or talking about historical development this started in the early 1940s in 1940s james hiller and r f baker were looking to develop a method for pairing the size shape and structure available from the electron microscopes to a convenient method for determining the composition of individual particles in a mixed specimen and this they were trying to do it uh, once they are absorbed on the surfaces a detail about who proposed this h r e e l s as we abbreviate this was originally proposed and demonstrated by hillier and baker in 1944 but was not widely used until it got more widespread in research became more popular in research in the 1990s owing to the advances in microscope instrumentation and spectroscopic technology the components and properties of this particular spectrometer magnetic field is between two parallel plates when we consider this spectrometer objective aperture is there after this then we have specimen place where it is held then lens and finally the collector aperture all the components and properties which are there in this spectrometer it talks about the various components which are there in the instrument a photograph of this has been shown in this slide it has light microscope for viewing shadow image on transmission screen second part deals with magnetic spectrometer third is for photographic plate next is post specimen lens and this is followed by probe forming lenses and lastly we have electron gun with tungsten filament the highlight of this diagram has been shown in this slide which is photograph of the first electron microanalyzer which was given by hiller and baker in 1944 now the next question obviously that comes to one's mind is why is it used obviously it is used basically for the measurement of one local properties number 2 including specimen thickness then mechanical and electronical properties of the adsorbents on the surface and of course it uh, deals largely uh, with chemical composition now obviously when we are using this uh, technique there will be a lot of advantages that is why a scientist is persistently using this for the surface analytical experiments the advantages here are higher core loss signals higher ultimate spatial resolutions absolute standardless quantification which is very important and structural information that is made available once we carry out experiments with this what are the disadvantages in the earlier slide we had talked about the advantages but this talks about what are the disadvantages of this the disadvantages are higher spectral background very thin specimen needed sometimes you are not able to get that much thinness in a specimen possible inaccuracy in crystals that also leads to wrong observations and more operator intensive equipment it would depend upon how good an operator is and that would decide about the accuracy of the results major disadvantage of this spectrometer a severe limitation of eels is specimen thickness because it is very difficult to get a very thin specimen for aluminum the usable thickness for eels analysis 
is of the order of 10 to 20 nanometers, which is a very thin sample. For heavier materials such as steels, the limiting thickness is even less. So, therefore, it becomes very difficult to get a sample which is of a very thin quality and that low thinness one cannot at time very easily make and therefore remains a disadvantage while using EELS spectrometer. After having known the usefulness of this equipment, we obviously come to the application side of this. There are uh, three main applications. One, it is uh, very commonly used for thickness measurement. We can also measure pressure with the help of this. And obviously, analytical electron microscopy is another one which is emerging out of this. What way this HREELS has been applied to some organic molecules? The case of ethylene is the one which is given here. The structure and reactivity of ethylene can be absorbed on transition metal surfaces are of fundamental importance in surface science and heterogeneous catalysis. HREELS technique has been foremost among the surface characterization techniques employed in here. In fact, the first vibrational spectroscopic study of ethylene chemisorbed on platinum 111 phase was carried out with electron energy loss spectroscopy almost a decade before infrared reflective absorption spectroscopy was employed. Application part of this when we analyze self assembled monolayers. When we have self assembled monolayer, this technique is finding very precise applications. Technological and scientific interests in self assembled monolayers, abbreviated as SAMs, lie in their applicability in many areas such as corrosion protection, biomimeting membranes, chemical sensors, etc. The driving force in the facile information of SAMs is the high affinity of end group for the metal substrate. Organosulfur compounds such as alkanothiol and alkyl disulfides have been widely studied because they spontaneously form highly ordered structures on transition metal surfaces such as gold and platinum, IRAS and Raman spectrum or Raman scattering also we can call it. Some frequency generations and HREELS are among the vibrational spectroscopic techniques which are employed to probe the structure and organization of monolayer and bilayers over SAM surfaces. So students, you have seen how powerful this particular technique is for carrying out the analysis of the adsorbates on the surfaces. So having studied all these, let us now summarize what exactly we have learned out of this module. We have learned mainly about electron energy loss spectrometry, which is obviously a very powerful analytical technique that measures the change in kinetic energy of the electron after they have interacted with a specimen on the surface. And with a little modification of this, we have even dealt with high resolution electron energy loss spectroscopy, which is equally powerful tool for carrying out the uh, adsorbates orientation and other details on the surfaces. Thank you so very much.